We are live, it says. Hello. It's good to see all of you today. We're here at the workshop of workshop of Wood Spun Round. I'm Doug, uh, your host today, and I've got a couple of helpers today in the background. I've got Mark and Ruby. Mark and Ruby are, are both RPTs. So <laughs> and, yeah, uh, you have to say it twice. <gasps> no, I didn't say it twice. <laughs> Yes, he did. Well, it's two different sentences, though. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Mark and Ruby are going to be helping us out. Uh, they'll read out to everybody that's in the chat your questions and all of those kinds of things and, and help keep me straight as well. Um, go ahead and put them in the background and uh, show you just a couple of things. Last week, we did this platter. You saw the, the top side of it last week. The back side was not finished. It, I finished it the next day. And it came out fair, and you know it's all right. <laughs> but that goes yeah. from my big, that goes from my big nice. walnut bowl. That ended up at eleven and a half inches, um, so it came out to be a pretty nice okay. plate platter, whatever you want to call it. And show um, it off with your walnut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's a uh, I don't have you, so I got to have something. Um, That's true. A few weeks ago, and I think I've mentioned this before. It's been probably three or maybe four weeks ago now, fella um, sends me a message. He says, I've got some wood here. I'm getting out of, of uh, turning. I'm not going to turn anymore, but I don't want this wood to go to waste. If you want it, it's free. If you just come by and pick it up. I was going by his town like the next day anyway. And so I went and picked it up. There was a five gallon bucket of small. There are some big pieces, but there was a five gallon bucket of smaller pieces. And this was at the top. Um, and it had a large amount of uh, blue resin on the top, and the bottom was coated with white. Uh, you might just see it there on the on the nub there, um, some white resin. It's gone because I wanted to go ahead and do a, a tenon. I wasn't sure how long this was going to take me to do uh, today, so I went ahead and got my tenon set up and um, almost got carried away and went ahead with the turning. So I just got started. That's what we're going to turn today. If you're watching, uh, uh, if you keep up with uh, Steve, SK Crafts, uh, he does his hashtag week, and this will be my hashtag week project. We may get to the lid if we do. Sorry, Mark, another piece of weed. Oh, another piece of walnut. <laughs> but that's our weed tree. You guys, you guys got you. We've got walnut. What can I say? Um, they get it. Uh, they want to get it out of all the fields because if they have uh, cattle or other livestock, it's not real healthy for some of that livestock. So they want rid of it in all the fields, that and cherry and uh, what we call Eastern red cedar, which is- Oh, know, my heart just cedar. beats for you. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know, it's all weeds. So anyway, we're gonna put this in the chuck and get started. Um, if y'all wanna, y'all wanna go ahead and start the, reading off I'll, the chat I'll, there. I'll start at the top. I'll start at the top where I came in. Good evening, everybody, welcome along. Good to see you all. So the first name I've got at the top of the list is door 60 and then some lady called ruby claire's in the chat <laughs> chris from bailey woodworks uh rob from clingsport braces hello rob fred gilliver ward wilson wurzel the wood butcher uh malcolm douglas roger wallam uh going down the list todd glen cove Brown at Hardwood Turning, Roger Kent, Lucy Bundy Rowe, Hi, Mike Lucy. Evans, Anthony Green, Barry Chitty, Old Man River Wood Turner, Ian Leach, uh, going back down again, I had to go up a bit, Burt's Balls. And I believe that's everybody in the list. Doug's pressed the wrong button. So yes, now Ruby's on screen. And I, I don't have any wood to turn with me at the moment. I'll have to go downstairs and grab some, Doug. No, he'll, he'll, he'll be back. There he is. That stupid button. Here's I, your I, someday I'm going to figure out what to do about that button. Get rid of it. I was trying Doug to get a, something else. Doug had a senior moment, everybody. Yeah, I don't think it was that bad. It's a, it's a button on the side of my mouse. If I touch it, 
Yeah, it could be worse. Away. He could have highlighted you, Mark. No, see, because oh. you've made it. You've made the rookie error by coming into the uh, backstage area as an earworm first. <laughs> it was a linger back bit. Hey, I came in before Doug did. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Doug, do you want to put us in the background, mate? Oh, come on. So neat. They don't want to see us. They don't want to see us. They want to see you. <laughs> You're the star. They want to see you, but I don't have you here. That is awfully washed out. I am so sorry. There's not much I can do about it. But can you turn the light off? That'd be the only light I've got on, Mark. Okay, no, don't do that. Let's, let's try. I don't. Yeah. No. It's off. It's too dark for me. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll, that's we'll usually the one that works, but you'll see the outline, and and we'll yeah, 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 do yeah. better later. We'll do better yeah. later. Okay, we're gonna start off. Uh, we've got it. Uh, in the chuck by the tenant, I pulled up my tailstock just for now, uh, just for a little extra safety. Uh, we're just going to clean this up a little bit and do some sanding, and then we'll go to go to town on the inside. Starting off slow, and then we'll turn it up. My my official roadie has just come in. That's Wyvy Woodshed. Hello, Wyvy. Uh, Wyvy, I'll be at that uh, handles at the end of the month, mate. I can do with a hand. Old Man River has sent you a message, Doug. He says you can ship any extra walnut, cherry, and red cedar to him. <laughs> well, you know. Le Barry has, has joined. Oh, oh, Barry, bonjour. He's not burning anything tonight. And no, it's not a phone camera. There we go. That's all right, Doris. No problem, mate. Glad I arrived. Got the relay running about 12.50 right now. Uh, Lucy, uh, the last Friday of the month at Jandals is their um, in-house demonstration night. So I'm demonstrating there four till six. And this month I'm doing table lamps with long hole pouring. That sounds good. Yes, Lucy, it is. 25th. Boys and boys joined. Hello, uh, Roy. Hey, Roy. It is good to have everybody in the chat today. It's uh, well, every, everybody except Wayne. Unfortunately, Wayne's not feeling very yeah, well. Yeah, feel bad about that. Kind of um, hard for us to do anything for him from over here. Yeah. Uh, so Wifey said he's not sure he's going to be able to make my demo at the end of the month. Well, who's going to carry my stuff in then? Hey, <laughs> that's just selfish. Let's see. Well, if you I really get... want Mark, I'll come over. Feel free, Ruby. You can always stay at my place. Yeah. I, I might be a little critical of your demo, though. Make sure you do everything properly. I turn the lathe off when I move the tool rest. Yes. And wear a face shield. Of course, we shield. all do that. We all and do that, don't we, wear, everyone? Wear a face shield. You can't always wear a face shield when you're demonstrating. You know that. Mm. That's all right, Lucy. Your little man's fifth birthday is much, much more important than watching a fat old wood turner turn lamps. We had a... We had a pretty lengthy discussion last night in Worldwide Woodturners about wearing a face shield, um, even when demoing. Um, it can be done. It can always be done. Um, you may not be able to communicate real well sometimes, but I, I kind of figure, you know, I've only been given one face, 
and um, it's not much, but my wife likes it. And so she <laughs> kind of insists that I do something yeah. to take care of it. I, I agree with your wife. I think it looks just fine. Yeah, it's going very well, thank you, Chris. Just seeing a question there. How's it going, Mark? Going very well, thank you. Very busy at the moment. Uh, Rob, yeah, feel free to pop along, buddy. Hopefully, you'll have those 150 mil rolls by then and saves on postage, etc., etc. So, what grits are you carrying, Mark? All, of, all the grits, Ruby. Every grit. What's the, the what's the courses? Uh, I can go down as far as 60, I believe. And the finest? 600, I think, is as far up as I can go. I think that's as far as I will go. I don't think anybody needs any more than 600. 600. Ben's in. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ben. Ben will be happy. The lid for this Ben's going to be a walnut. I'll tell you what we're going to do. It's not walnut dust, but it's close. We use a little. Uh, there's a there's a void right there. It's a what used to be a wormhole. I'm gonna put a little CA in there. Then we're gonna put a little Gavalia coffee grounds. This is some well, espresso not, that we didn't like. It's and not so, Arabiata then, or Ar Arabica, Arabica. I can never say it. Um. I don't know the origin of, of what they use. That's just the brand. And they make a nice coffee. Uh, this was a flavored espresso that we just did not like. And so when my wife said, I'm going to throw this away, I said, no, you're not. She said, what are you going to do with it? Said, Turn take it. it to the shop. <laughs> and she likes when I use it, she she knows what I'm what I've done. Another one here. That Rob, Rob from Queensboro. There's a question in the chat there for you from Sir Ben Jamin U U T. You can answer that one. <laughs> you, you this this is like a it. piece of ma of maple, isn't it? I'm not sure what it is, Ruby. It was in the in the pack and it was not labeled. Um, he even pulled it out and showed it to me. He said, "I don't," said, "I don't remember what this is." So. <laughs> You said it was very light, didn't you? Yes. Did you mean light in weight or light in color? Light in color. Very light. Oh, okay. Has yeah, some, it's... you all can't see it, but in the grain lines along here, um, it's got some real faint, almost orangish color. Same up here in the neck. Um, of course, yeah, it's that's, false. That's why I'm tending to think it's in the, in the maple family. It may very well be. Very well may be. I just don't know. Okay, that's enough for now. May have to do some more later, but we'll see. But anyway, that's that's espresso ground coffee, very fine. And uh, when it's all turned and sanded and finished, it has the tendency to look like a bark inclusion. Mm. So uh, that's one reason I like to use it. Looks natural instead of looking so foreign. Plus, it smells nice in the shop. It does. Yeah, when you turn it and sand it, you'll especially when you sand it, you get that uh, coffee aroma. Yep. So if you, if you like coffee, it's a good thing. If you don't like coffee, yeah, still I doesn't like smell bad. I like the smell of coffee. I just don't care for the acidic taste of it. Right. Yeah. I give my wife a hard time. She, she puts uh, cream and sugar or sweetener in her coffee. And, uh, I tell her she really doesn't like coffee. She likes all that other stuff. She just fusses and carries on. Well, Chris is saying that he loves coffee. Yeah, I typically do. Just didn't like this particular pound of coffee. Hmm. I don't I guess remember I... what it was flavored with, but I just didn't like it. I guess I'll stick with being a tea granny. Yeah, it's got to be filled some more there. But other than that, I'll go ahead and put some more in there. Uh, Ben's the asking why I don't have 320 quid. 
but I do have 360 quid because that's what they sent me. <laughs> well, there's not so the a lot of there's not a lot of difference between 320 and 360. It's uh, in the J Flex cloth backed rolls, Rob. I think it just dawned on me what flavor this coffee was. I think it had some hazelnut in it. Oh, no, no it. flavor coffee. It's just what well, Wayne's on here. I know, I know. This is this is probably his best, his favorite way of using flavored coffee. <laughs> Unless he flavors it with wine or, or something of that nature. Just kind of pressing the grounds down into the void that's there. We'll put just a little more glue on top of that. One of the interesting things about CA glue and coffee is that the coffee actually it works as an accelerator. You really don't need to put any more accelerator when you use coffee. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, it sets up very quickly, very quickly. Now what's on the wood, yeah, I wish you could see it. But what's here on the wood is still wet, but what's on the coffee like this one particularly, that's hard already, hard as a rock. Even this parfix is kind of slow to set off um, intentionally. Um, I'm not sponsored by parfix, I just like the glue. I bought this with my own money. All right. It even feels better when I'm sanding it. Is it. When I turn this vacuum on, is it real loud? No, it's fine, mate. Okay. I may not be able to hear you all very well, but that's okay. I won't be sanding that long. Yeah, there's a comment by Alex up there that if uh, it had chicory in it, it would be a revolting coffee. Well, the original coffee the people drank in North America um, when they first settled over here was primarily made using chicory leaves yes. and uh, flowers. Right. Those, those are the pretty blue flowers growing wild along the highways. Rob, I'm going to send you a picture, mate. And you can, you can still get coffee made with chicory uh, as well. I ordered here. 320, but I didn't get 320. 360. <laughs> I can send you a screenshot if you like. Rob, he's passing the buck. Name Elizabeth. <laughs> Try to take a screenshot. I can't take it. Sure. If I just forward this email. There's a bump right there, and I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's the grain. It's the difference between some of the spalted grain and the hard grain, right in that area, right there. Uh, I get no. There we go. Good image there. Trying to get just a little bit of shadow on it, so it's not going to show up very well. But it's anyway in the spalting. There's a little bit of softness, so as well as hardness, and that's what I'm feeling is some of that difference. Yeah, that's why I'm tending to think more that this is a, a soft maple. Yeah, it probably is. Um, Page two, Rob. Just sent you an email. <laughs> I'm also changing directions of the lathe every time I change grits of my paper. Chris has said that that's pretty, and I agree. It's a very pretty piece of wood.
lovely shape too, Rob. Uh, Doug. Well, thank you. It was yeah. it was turned kind of as a bottle. Um, I've just I accentuated the neck a little bit and reduced the size down here so that it was more of a a vase or a vase kind of shape. Now, do you say vase or do you say vase? Vase. Yeah. Not even a Z sound. It's a it's a vase, not a vase. <laughs> now there is, for some of us, there is a difference between a vase and a vase. Oh, I can't hear myself think. Good night. Um, difference between a vase and a vase, as far as I'm concerned, price tag. Price tag. Yeah. Geographical location. Vase vase comes from the uh, from the dollar store. Vase comes from something a little more higher class. The antique <laughs> store. Yeah, yeah. Comes from a different century, or maybe even a different millennia. Definitely, definitely a different millennia. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're turning a vase in spindle work, it's uh, usually straight after a fillet or a cove. Right. So you turn a, a bead, a fillet, cove into a vase, and the vase goes into a taper. Yeah, yeah. I like that combination on a, on a uh, finial. That's, yes. that's a great combination. The vase part is also known as the onion. Yes. The vase is the onion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this would be the big part going slimming down going up to yeah your... i have to always because I, I quite often speak to steve jones and uh, richard finley asking them questions about work and we have to we have to call things different things to each other because we all live in different parts of the country <laughs> right <laughs> so what steve calls a what steve calls a vase i'd call an onion what he okay. calls an onion I wouldn't call it anything. I didn't have a name for it. Well, Rob from Copper Owl has joined us. Good evening, Rob. Hey, Hi, Copper. Rob. Okay, I know that's loud. No, it's fine. I think that was his compressor. Yeah, my compressor goes off, and it's it's even it, louder. It's than not the... unbearable, mate. Just really, it's well, not. It's turned off now, so it doesn't matter. Your microphone takes care of it. Lewis is in. Hello, Lewis, Klondike Rossman. Hi, Lewis. Pop pops in oh. the house. How's Jack? Has he played Jack. his first hockey game yet? Jack must be okay or Lewis <laughs> wouldn't be here. Yeah, that's looking really good, Doug. Get a little alcohol on here, clean it off. Roy says he needs to clean up his workshop. When he gets done, he can come over and do ours, right, Doug? He can come clean mine anytime he wants. He doesn't need to do mine. I did mine the other day. Nah, 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 nah. No, you didn't. Your apprentice did. <laughs> <laughs> I did the sweeping. Okay, well, last, okay. Last time I was at Pete's, I did his. It was amazing how much room I created. I bet. That's why he went and bought that new lathe. <laughs> when my son was grade school, he would come in the shop while I was working, and first thing he'd do would be grab a broom. I never oh, asked him. Good training. Well trained. Well trained. Lewis yeah. is saying that Jack Jack is is great, and thanks for yeah. asking. <clears throat> About the time Christopher got out of grade school, hit middle school, sixth grade, I guess, he quit. Well, he pretty much quit coming in the shop, but the, he did definitely quit uh, sweeping. Oh, yeah, he, he, fills, he got smart. <laughs> yeah, that fill came out beautifully. Both of them did. They're just as smooth as they can be. Uh, that's good. Just, just a nice, rich brown. And it's interesting, the bottom has white um, resin in it. The top has blue. 
So he must have poured some white and then had to get some more blue. Fill in. I mean, it's full of bug holes and all kinds of things. So whatever wood this is, it's obviously sat on the ground for a while. <clears throat> Randy Smith says he keeps going down the workshop, putting another layer of CA on a pen blank. <laughs> I thought he was going to say nothing. another layer of dust. <laughs> no, I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Chris Copper Owl's first name is Rob. Oh my goodness, come on now. Something like that. Hold it there. There you go. Right there. There you go. I got to take it away from the camera. Goodness gracious. Toward the camera is not even better. So I have to go away. Uh, anyhow. Now, is this an abrasive paste? This is abrasive paste, yes. Okay. Um, I, in, in maybe you know something better than I do, Ruby, or even you, Mark, but I've just not found anything quicker for a, a decent finish than abrasive paste followed by wax. Um, there are some things you can get on there quicker, but it's not really finished uh, until you let it dry and do something different by doing this. I, I agree with you. I'm not going to get into the uh, the politics of different abrasive pastes. Oh, no. They no. all do their jobs. And I, I do agree. I think for hobby turners and serious hobby turners who are turning artistic pieces, it provides a dust free um, product that saves you having to have a dust extractor running for the higher grits. Right. It's brilliant. Right. And it's as a preparation. For a finish, you can't beat any of them. There, right. That's as diplomatic as I'm going to be. Yeah, no, you're, you're for, exactly for, right. For production turning, it's not needed because we only to we only sand up to 180, if right. that. Yeah, 120, 180, and it goes off to be painted. Mm -hmm. So any finer in the paint won't stick, and it, it's pointless. Right. You know, when I was turning commercially for the wood mill, they would only let me sand up to 120. And that, otherwise, the wood wouldn't take stains or paint or anything properly. Sure, yeah. right. Which was the first piece I did was a newel post, and uh, I sanded it to 600, and it kind of broke my heart having to go back and re-sand it at 120. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex, the wood butcher, Wurzel, he's asking you, Doug, is that your version of Yorkshire grit or true grit? It's it's not my version, but it's what I use. Uh, this is Axe wood paste. Uh, it's made in Pennsylvania. Uh, Tom and Annette Ackley. I was putting an R in their last name for a long time, but it's Ackley. Uh, real nice folks. They came and talked to me uh, about representing them, showing their product. And I had already asked Glenn about it, and Glenn never responded, so... Well, we have uh, we have one being made up here now. Yes. Um, called Superior. Yeah. And uh, made by Rob Summerlin of, uh, and it works quite well. They're all about the same. They're honestly. very similar. Yeah. Now very Lewis similar. did did the same thing I did. His first piece he sanded to six hundred and then had to take it back. Or couldn't get the finishes to match. Right. Yeah, you sand real fine. For us, we need it fine so that we can get a nice clear finish on it with the beauty of the wood show. But if you want to need to stain it or paint it, you really don't want 600 right. plus. <laughs> you close off that wood and it won't accept it. So even I've got this sanded to 320. This, uh, Abrasive paste will take it up to a thousand or so, and uh, if I were to go back and put stain on it, I can probably get stain, but I'll probably have to do a couple of coats just to get it to look right, and it won't go very deep. Oh, Lewis has just sent me a picture of Jack Jack. He's way too cute. But has he ever grown? He he looks older than he is. Man alive. What are you feeding that kid? 
anyway that's the, this is the axe wood paste that i'm getting ready to put on which is a carnuba i need no. a ball's joint i need to i need uh what color you need today anita now chris was making a comment he tried some of rob summerlin's uh, abrasive and then found out he wasn't using it right but i highly recommend anybody using uh, these waxes to do is to take that Hampshire course mm -hmm. that uh, Martin Saban uh, Smith yep. offers because it it just covers so much. It's well worth the time you spend even just watching all of the uh, videos. And it's they're one always of the most, one of the most comprehensive finishing courses available for Absolutely. free. Absolutely. And for wood turners. Yeah. Remind me, how long is that? About six hours worth of videos? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, a good six hours. Yeah. I plan on spending a full day. Absolutely. Or several days. <laughs> when he was guest earworming for, on Steve's show that Friday night, somebody said they had done it that afternoon and martin said that's great except for one problem you didn't practice <laughs> you, take, you take the time to practice it's going to take you a couple of days probably let's get another piece of paper towel i've got a big big order of hemp machine stuff coming in tomorrow i got the some of y'all may not have gotten it. Um, Martin is doing away with the 250 milliliter size bottles of his intrinsic colors. And so they are on a big discount. If you haven't, if he's not sold out already, if you can get some, they're a super good discount right now. Is he going down to smaller? Uh, yes, yes. What is uh, uh, 150, I think, or 125 size? Uh yeah, 125, I believe. Yeah. So you might check, you guys who are in, in England, you might check on that side, on that 250, and grab you some if you've used it before. If, even if you haven't used it before, if you'd like to try it, this is a good time. Yeah. It depends on whether you're really into coloring wood or not. That's true, yeah. Like I, with a piece of wood like you've got there, I would be really hard pressed to want to color it. To me, it, it, didn't, looks, it looks so nice natural. If it didn't have resin in it already, I would probably think about it. I don't know if I'd do it or not, but I would think about it. Okay, that's, that's uh, the inside I, of it. Can I be really cheeky and throw my ambassador link into the chat? I suppose. <laughs> 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 yes, go ahead, Mark. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> if anybody That's wants to buy any Amstrachine products, yeah, uh, feel free to use this link, and has he, it helps me out a little bit. Is he passed? Has he passed on along that sale price to you on the two fifty uh, size? Yeah, we we as ambassadors we get a discount. Okay, I, the reason I was asking, I contacted my distributor here, and. Uh, that that sale price has not been passed on over here and so while he was he was going to discount it it wasn't going to be as nearly as cheap as what martin is selling it for so ordered it anyway i think it's worth getting the bigger bottles oh yeah but yeah again. and like i said it was at a much discounted price this wasn't as cheap as what martin was talking about yeah Okay, tail stock's out of my way. Roy has and made any more microphone yet. I believe he has. Roy, I believe he has. I believe he's got some in stock now. You want to change your camera, Doug? Yes, ma'am. That's what I was just about to do, if I can figure out what I did with my mouse. Oh, that's gone wobbly. Doug? 
Yeah, I, I see yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely wobbling. I'm not sure it wasn't already, but no, it's more. It's more. No, it, it just suddenly went wobbly. Raymond Wise has joined. Hi, Raymond. Welcome along. Hi, Raymond. Oh, that's why. Yeah. That's why it's always good to check your chuck. Anytime you do anything, check it. Make sure it's tight. I've had more than one piece fly off because. Well, you could treat yourself to it. When are you going to treat yourself to a better chuck? <laughs> oh, I'm when, sorry, I'm a chuck snob. When 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 you send me the gift card to do it with. Okay, Doug. I'm going to win the lottery. <laughs> when I win the lottery, I'll buy you an SK114. That'll work. Yeah, that'll work. I thought you'd say that. This chuck is probably close to as old as I am, except that they weren't making them yet. Um, this chuck's older than... How long I've been turning, I know that. <laughs> and that's only been a couple of years, right? Oh, only a couple. Chris Walters is off. He's going to have, he's offered uh, some coffee. Lewis, Lewis says time for a Vic mark. I have, what, three Vic marks and I like them. Oh, I'm showing off now. Your seven lathes. Well, the reason, the, reason, the reason I have three Vic marks is I don't want to be changing jaws. Jaws all the time. It's that's easier to just pick up a, a different uh, chuck. Ruby, that's the only reason I've got five SK114s. They're all different chucks on them. All well, got different jaws on them. That's why I have seven lathes, too, because if I want to turn something a certain size on one, I use one lathe. And if it's longer, I use a different lathe. Right. Like the one lathe I've got, I can do a three foot to four foot uh, diameter piece. If I was going to use any other chuck other than Axminster, it would be a Vicmark. Same for the lathe. They're very I'd well have, made. I'd have a Vicmark lathe in a heartbeat. Well, I have to say the power matics are well made as well, Wayne, or Mark. I've used a power matic. I didn't like the on off switch. Wonder if it was a newer one then. Just personal preference. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, this is in spindle orientation, but I'm going into it right now because I'm just trying to shape this mouth a little bit. And then I'll Alan start. Gibbs just, Alan Gibbs just joined. He's asking, what are you making tonight, Doug? Well, right now it's a kind of a bottle form, a, a, a vase, vase, whatever you want to call it. But um, then once you once you put a lid on it, with maybe a finial, then it'll become a hollow form. Yes. Yeah, eventually that's the plan, is that it'll be a lidded hollow form, lidded pot, lidded box, whatever you want to call it. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go to, let's go to Jamie Page's favorite tool. Now, Lucy wants to know how long you've been turning, Doug. She's just being nosy. That's okay. 247 so years. I've got to kind of figure it. My son is, my son is 21. Uh, so this session, I've been turning for about 24 years. I was turning when I was in high school. Of course, I only graduated two weeks ago, so... <laughs> when I was turning the first time when I was in high school, gas was like 25, 26 cents a gallon. Pete from Twisted Trees has joined us. Good morning, Pete. Good evening, Peter. Afternoon, Pete. I pretty much covered all of them. Well, since he always says good morning, I thought I'd say good morning as well. 
Well, I run into that conflict when I talk with my friends in New Zealand and Australia, because quite often if it's evening here, it's morning there. Yes. And the next day. That 14 hour ahead of us thing. That came loose again. I may go to a different chuck anyway. It may not be a new one, but a different one, Mark. This keeps coming loose. This old Nova is a great chuck, and I do not regret having it. Um, it's been a faithful chuck for many, many years. And the leaves just need to be disassembled and cleaned. Well, Roy's saying it looks like all the 250 milliliter bottles of the Hampshire Sheen Intrinsic are gone. Could be. Wouldn't surprise me. He had them at such a good price. All right. This is this is such a fun thing to have to do right in the middle. Change chucks. There, something I can use. Or there are people now going up and down this all over the world going, oh, I hate you. He bought a one-way lathe in an estate auction, Doug, a model 2036 with an eight-foot bed, serial number one. Oh, my. For $300. Oh my! Yeah, you, you didn't buy it. You stole it. Exactly. We all hate you. There's, there's well, only one. Like. I don't know. Hate, hate may be a little strong. Hate's but, a little strong. Despise. How's that? How's that? Despise. That's better. Yeah. 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 No, you're just plain jealous. Yeah. Gee, but, that's uh, that's true. a steal. My only Aren't issue you? with with that is it's a one way. I don't, yeah. you know, again a personal thing. I don't care for one way lays. There, there's something. They it's like, like the difference between us. Well, that too. Yeah. They, it's like the difference between a sports car and a Cadillac. I like a sports car because I can feel the road. I can feel what's going on. Cadillac, I can't feel it. I don't know what the road's doing. I've been offered a union graduate. I've got to go look at it tomorrow. Short bed uh, for 200 pounds. So I don't know how, how good a condition it is. Well, it's worth it'd looking be, at, yeah. Yeah. To be a good, be, good teaching lathe. Sure. Have a bed or is it bedless? No, it has a short bed. Okay. So it's only a three foot bed. But it doesn't have variable speed, so I'd have to put variable speed on it. Yeah. You definitely want variable speed. Absolutely. Now, Colin what can I do with this? Yes. Welcome, Colin. Hi, right, Colin. Had to hunt down my jaws. I've got them now. He says, yeah, it has reverse, and it weighs 1,000 pounds. Half At ten. least. Well, when people buy, ask me what to look for when they're buying a lathe, I tell them they want variable speed, forward and reverse, and Morse taper twos in both ends, the head stock and the tail, tail stock. Because that way, most of the accessories you would want, uh, you can get quite easily and reasonably priced. Yeah. I never understand why some of the older lays have Morse Taper 2 in one end and Morse Taper 3 in the other. That doesn't make any sense at all. See, that's well, one of the does. issues. It does, because then you have to buy their their uh, accessories. Yeah, it makes sense yeah. for that point. Which is, it doesn't make any sense issue. for usage. That's another issue I've got with one way. They use uh, two in the tail well, stock the Watkins, and three the Watkins in, the... in this country do as well. They have two in one end, three in the other. The Watkins do, huh? That's that's a carryover from uh, making metal lathes. Yeah, it may be. That's, that, I hadn't thought of that before. 
The one thing that concerns me with some of the lathes that I've used, uh, my left foot is forever kicking the uh, leg underneath the headstock. Right. And I like to be able to get down at that end. Michael has a party joined. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Michael. I'll say it again while I'm putting these jaws on this chuck. I am so grateful for all of you being here today. It's um, that's always a a back mind, not really a fear, but a question I have. Will anybody bother to show up today? And uh, uh, we'll, I, just, we'll I appreciate keep, everybody being here. We'll keep you covered. I've always Roy, got a question for you, Doug. Okay. Sorry, Ruby. You you, you ask it, Doug. Go on. He want he'd like to know what computer you're using. It's a uh, HP Pavilion that has a uh, uh, mm -hmm, Windows 10 on it. When I when I first started getting set up, I had a different computer, my old desktop from here at home that I had set up. Got it all set up. Started to download all my software. Lo and behold, it was a Windows 8. It would not support anything. No, it mm. wasn't a Windows 8 either. It was a Windows Vista. Vista. Yeah, that's right. It, I could not, it wouldn't support anything that I needed. Not StreamYard, not, um, mm -hmm. I'm looking yeah. right here at the OBS. That was what I'm trying to get out. Um, it wouldn't support nothing. So I had to switch out my computer and, this one at least is a Windows 10. It will do the job. Now, just before I even pull up the tail rest, oh, that's going to be great. This is another Nova Chuck, but it's a little more modern than the other one was. All right. Now, Ward said that he finds his foot hits the headstock end as well. So he learned to turn left handed when he needed to. And I think it's a good idea for people to practice turning left-handed periodically, regardless. It makes you understand your cuts much better. Absolutely. There you go, uh, Ben. There's a lathe for you, mate. You five thousand eight hundred pounds. Well, if you're going to get a Vic Mark lathe, Mark, you might as well get the Vic Mark chucks too. Well, Ben was saying he doesn't like not having a rotating headstock. The, the Thick Mark 240 has rotating headstock. So do the uh, record power lathes. In fact, my world they turn 360 degrees, and I find it's extremely handy uh, so that I don't have to bend over to the side when I'm hollowing in that. We yeah. talked about this one has a rotating headstock, and that causes the headstock, tailstock, a lot of alignment issues. Look what I got, Ruby. Hey. Good idea. Well, 5,800 for you, see. Uh, Ronald Todd's just joined. Hi, Ronald. Good to have you along. Hi, Ron. All right. Just a little extra light here. Well, Alex, that's why I'm glad I don't have a method. And my husband's not allowed to touch or use any of my machinery. All I right. thought the headstock slid along on that one, Ben. Does it not? It only it only rotates. Fair enough. Okay. Use my Easywood Tools pencil since I don't have a. Oh, don't you start! <laughs> you, you, Mark, you, Mark hasn't made you one yet, has he? Oh, you you started as well, woman. God's sake! You called. Were there any messages, Mark? 
Yeah. Oh, I can't remember who I've made them for now. Jamie's got one. Colin Edwards, uh, Colin Roberts has got one. Steve, Brian. Uh, somebody else who had one. And here I, uh, I, I, I gave you a, a <laughs> thickness gauge. Yes. Seriously, seriously, Mark, I have two already. To be fair, Pete, I have offered to make Pete one, and he said, no, really, honestly, I've got one. You don't need to make one, but it's very funny anyway. Actually, for thickness, I prefer to just stick a ruler inside. I've got a thin ruler. One of those folding ones. Yeah. I've got the one that Wayne uses as well with, with the, the baseboard that goes on the bedways and the Sticky out and stick. I use that one too. Now, All Mark, right. do you have one of those uh, pro haulers from uh, Sorby? No, I don't use them. Okay. Just if I if I have. Uh, any deep hollowing to do, I use the Simon Hope okay. articulated arm. And you like that okay? I do. And I found out the other day that if you put the uh, woodcut pro form cutter in the Simon Hope articulated arm, boy, that's a weapon. Hmm. So you've got that shielded hook, hook tool on an articulated arm. That, that'll hollow out quick. Yes. Now, one of my students just picked up the uh, Simon Hope uh, deep hollowing system. Is that the black articulated arm thing, yeah? Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're brilliant. So oh. versatile. Now, did you get the laser with it? I used the laser one. I didn't get the television one yet. Nice one, Roy. All right. I think we're about as far as we're going to go. pretty good uh, I need to clean up our rim here just a touch Andy the Valley Wood Turners in it's Lucy's hey, husband Andy. Hi, hey, Andy. Hi, Andy. now if you're going to put a lid on this are you going to leave a recess for it to uh, sit into yes this is already it's dished in a bit down to the opening and that's where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to make my lid with a small tenon so it'll it'll actually sit out just a little bit from the edge. Okay. Just want to clean up this make it nice and smooth. Give it a little sandy sand sand. Slow my speed down. 500 RPMs for sanding. What I've been doing lately is taking my pieces of sandpaper like that, and I've got a clip that holds them together. Yes. So we can just hang them on the wall nearby. And that way I can find them instead of digging through all the pile of stuff on my bench. <laughs> Let me come over here and I'll show you what I've done. And this was after we talked. Right here, I've got the top edge of a clipboard with the clip on it. 
that I've screwed into this wall and I usually hang them right there on my on that uh, clip. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It does. It, it keeps it so because usually I have them set them up here and they just blow off. If I run the <laughs> my airline at all, I'm looking all over the shop for them. Well, right it's above, easy with the airline, so I blow my sandpaper everywhere. Yeah. Well, right above where your uh, left elbow is in the uh -huh. ceiling, because I'm working in the basement, I just put a nice size hook, and sure. that's where I hang my airline. So it's right. just quick and easy to, to reach. Yeah. Mine is hung on the end of the tailstock end of my bed waist. On the legs, there's a little bar that goes across, and I just get on there. I really, really want one of those retractable ones. It goes back into a hose reel thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love one of those. It's just little things. Hmm. Yeah. They haven't seen one of those. It's like sprung loaded, so you just pull it and use it and let it go and it goes back. Um, oh, it's pick up. Yeah. It used to be you would see them hanging from the ceiling in, in mechanic shops. Right. Um, they made their way over into wood shops. Um, they're not cheap. Oh, you messaged me after this, mate. Well, chat. I've got a suggestion for you. But I can't talk about it publicly. Ruby knows why. A certain famous wood turner will kill me if I do. All right, that's a little better. There's a warm place there, right on the edge, that inner edge. Because he made me promise, didn't he, Ruby? Yes. It's probably one of my analysis is when I'm turning a piece that has a little bit of worm damage. Seems like there's always one right in a critical spot. This one's got one right on this inner edge. Well, of course. Yeah. You wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't want it to be ordinary. Exactly. And when it's on an edge, you can't do much with it. It's tough to fill. You know, like on the flat side, I could do my my coffee grounds or you could do shavings or what have you. On the edge, it can be done, but it's a lot more difficult. All right, we're getting on close to the hour now, aren't we? Uh, 58 minutes. Yep. Don't worry about it. Nobody's got anywhere to go. I don't well, know. Let me, let me, let, well, Mark, that's not quite true. I mean... Over, over where you are, you've already had supper, but we no, haven't. I haven't. But we, no, we gotta, haven't, we haven't had supper here. I still got to cook when I go upstairs. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to probably hit the grocery store before uh, I do any cooking this evening. I did that last night. Tonight we've got some boneless pork chops in the refrigerator, so. All I've got to do is go up and pull them out, put them on the grill. I said, I am enjoying this carnivore diet thing. It's so easy. <laughs> throw a steak in, cook it, wash the pan, done. <laughs> yep, yep. No, I like a good salad. So I've got to go and pick up some lettuce and some green onions and radishes. And... Oh, shut up. You're making me hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> Sanding sealer? It is now. First time was alcohol. This is sanding sealer now. Then we'll go to a little abrasive paste. I'm going to try to show it to you this time. Just going to get some on my paper towel and let that be that. 
is barely going to go into the inside of the vase. Now, when people are finished with their uh, abrasive paste and they usually put on their uh, final wax in order to uh, give a final coat to their piece, the biggest mistake they seem to be make is that they don't let it dry first and then buff it. Yes. Um, Mark, it seems like you were in on that part of the conversation when Mark was on the first time as one of Steve's earworm or a, yeah, special earworm. And he said not to, to wait, but yes, I think you're right, Ruby. Uh, wax, most waxes at least, need to sit at least a few minutes. Right. And it's uh, it's the same as when you're waxing floors. Back in oh, yeah. the olden days, we used to wax our hardwood floors. Yeah. And you would put the wax on, you'd leave it about 15, 20 minutes, and then you come back in with the buffer and buff them. Sure. I tend to apply the wax with a paper towel, and when the paper towel starts to starts to drag yeah that's when i buff it because that means all the solvents have evaporated off well what i do is i put it on and then is when i i go and i uh get the broom and clean up all the wood chips and stuff around and, then by, the time, time for that. and then by the time i come back it's ready to be buffed <laughs> oh, so sweep it up is this What's this broom business? <laughs> yeah. Well, I sweep it every couple of weeks. That's about it. Well, I forgot. You guys don't have a broom, whereas we have brooms because we use them for transportation as well. I've got a broom. <laughs> I've, I've got a proper American-style broom. I just use it once every couple of weeks. I don't want to wear it out. <laughs> well, I, I, don't, I don't care for getting the wood chips up to my thighs. And if I left left them sitting there that long, that that would be the problem I'd have. Yeah. Keep your feet warm in the winter. No, Mark. That's why I turn in the house. It's <laughs> and in the summer, it's air conditioned. <laughs> yep. Same for me. It's a workshop, not a surgical theater. This is true. Well, that's a matter of opinion. When you're doing fine piercing and carving, yeah, it's it becomes a surgery. That's why I don't do fine carving and piercing. <laughs> mm, you see my work, Ruby. Really. <laughs> you well, we'll, some piercing, we'll, get, we'll get you to that stage yet, Mark. Don't worry. Yeah, no, that's almost as bad as segmenting. I've done one segment a piece, and I worked and worked get all those seams exactly right and placed in the right place got it all dry got it on the lathe turned it thought i had a thing of beauty for my very first one lo and behold somebody says that would be beautiful but you've got two seams that are lined up i looked and i found them oh, how in the world no. i had two seams that were lined up i don't know oh. see that would just destroy me well i haven't done that, them since that, that so. I'd be like Pete then. I'd just throw it on a fire, burn it, and never do segmenting again. Well, I'm not burning it because it was my first one. And it took, oh my goodness, the hours that were involved. Yeah. And it's not but, what, seven, eight layers tall? I mean, I just, I, That's I got a really it. pretty shape. That is a lovely shape. I can't say anything really because I do that spiral work. And it takes hundreds of hours. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's well, relaxing. Yes. Oh. And one if day when I'm dead, it might we'll be worth thousands of pounds. <laughs> sure as hell ain't worth thousands of pounds now. No. No. Ah. Now, see, my, my approach would be if it didn't work the first time, I'd redo it and get it right the second time. Yeah. Actually, what I've been playing around with lately is uh, Ron Brown from Ron Brown's Best. 
has come out with a jig for making a bowl out of a board. Yes. Yeah. And I've been experimenting with that and cutting different uh, angles of uh, rings and then gluing them up. And it uh, works out quite nice. There's, you got the Papa 1947 and Phil Anderson. Um, Papa 1947, Gary. He's been doing that. He's, um, yeah, I was going to say, he's been doing that for a long time. Uh, yeah. Lewis did it too. It's, Lewis um, did it a slightly different way, I think, as well. Yeah, like, there's like two or three ways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I was doing them with a bandsaw initially. Oh, really? I wanted, wanted to see what happens when you cut the rings on the lathe. And, you don't get the uh, gap, do you? No. I'm just pinching this piece of walnut between the chuck and the live center. I do, I do like the ball from a board. Yeah. There. Lewis, yeah. has said, Lewis has said he's gotten asked to make some segmented urns after a person has passed. So he's made them in two days, start to finish. And that's That's pretty good work, Lewis. Absolutely. All right, that's tight. I need to measure. Well, usually it takes one day to get them cut out and glued up. So then the second day to turn. But we all know in the nicest possible way that Lewis is insane. And when he says two days, that's like solid. He's in his workshop for 48 hours. Now, Mark, you're you're making that sound like being insane is is a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. <laughs> taking light cuts, get these corners down. Uh, Anthony Green, where are you based? Are you in the UK or are you in America? Yeah, see, Lewis stopped at three. He stopped at three a.m. on the first day. Yeah, but <laughs> ask, ask from what time he started, Mark. Yeah, three forty-five. <laughs> Went in, had a coffee, shut his eyes, came back out. Uh, Anthony, go to Hope Wood Turning. I'll put the link in. I've often done the same thing as Lewis. You get going on a project, and uh, next thing you know, and it's past midnight, and you're still going on it. I've been known many a time to be in here at 2 in the morning because I can't sleep. There you go, Anthony. There's the link for you. Some of the best following tools in the UK. Yeah, and there are people like um, Oliver's Wood Turning that carry the Hope tools as well. Yes. In fact, we now have a distributor for them over here. Do you? Well, that's good. Because I know he had to stop sending internationally for a while, didn't he? Because of the insurance costs. Yeah, so what I do is I, I was just ordering them from uh, Oliver, and uh, now I can order them from a company out in Calgary. Is that uh, Lee Valley? No. All right. No, it's Black Forest uh, Tool Company. Okay. All right. Because I have to be between centers, I can't pull that tail center out of the way. I'm measuring. I had my dividers sitting on the live center, so they're sitting even and, and found my spot where my tenon needs to be. Okay. And then I'm going to 
turn my speed down just get my mark all the way around so i can see it good now when i do this step doug what i do is i put it against a vacuum chuck and i let the vacuum chuck hold it on uh-huh vacuum chuck would work extremely well good if i had one available to me at the moment <laughs> i've got yeah, one it's on it's on my big bowl lathe is the issue and it's it's got an issue right now of some kind i haven't Which i've worked on it back? worked on that big bowl lathe but i have not gotten the issue squared away just yet And the bad thing on it, on that big bowl reed, is it's, my issue is with the reeves drive. Um, and it's all, this is a shop built lathe, and so I've got nobody to call or ask. Hmm. Sorry, I can't help you out there. Yeah, I'm afraid nobody can. The issue seems to be, you know, Reeves drive, the top pulley and the bottom pulley have to go in and out. And uh, it's not the motor pulley, it's the drive pulley that it's not going in and out like it's supposed to. And I don't have much in the way of access to it. So I've got to keep working at it little by little, keep lubing it, working it, trying to get it to the place where it works correctly then once it does it'll be grand boys boys the boys just said that the uh king's limb wood turners are selling their vic mark vls 175 how much how much how much how much yes mark <laughs> you need a you need a third lathe for teaching i do well i've got two looking at the third one tomorrow a fourth one would be lovely You might catch up to me one day. I will. I've got three. I just. <laughs> no, that's a bit. That's a bit. 1,900 pounds. That's a little bit out of my uh, budget at the moment because I'm cheap. Thank you, anyway. If anybody wants a VL175, 1,900 quid, go and see King's Lynn Wood Turners. Now, I just had a terrible thought. Go on then. I'm just trying to think, how am I going to grab that when I turn it around? Grab it on the tenon. I think no. my tenon's too small. We'll find out here in a minute. Okay, put your uh, piece back in the lathe, put the tenon into the hole. And if you moisten it, it might hold well enough with the tail center that you can shape it. Yes. Yeah, that's an idea. Box. Yeah, that would work. I, I, again, I think I have messed myself up for that even. I'm sure I've got some jaws here. I'll have, I would have to change jaws again. Um, Mind you. In my base, I think I curved that entrance into the hole a little too far. Mind you, if you find the center on the bat on the left side of it, you can put it back between centers. Let's see what we can do here. Well, test but it even... in your test it in your piece and see how well it fits in. Yeah, you can. Because I've gotten it smooth with my cut, you can kind of see it's got some really nice grain in this piece of walnut. Yes, it does. So I, I, I know it's too, these jaws are too big for sure. Yep. <clears throat> Try I love piece. these jaws, but. Um, did um, did um, did um, dum, dum, did um, dum, dum. Try it, try it in the. Uh... The first piece you turned. Right. In the base. No, no, in the base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just checking that, Chuck, make sure. 
I almost dropped it. So you're almost going to use the base like a jam jar. Right. It moves around an awful lot. Um, I've, like I said, I've got some jaws. Maybe this, always, this could always be a part two for next week if you want to. Well, it may have to be. In fact, as uh, as I look at the clock now, it's four fifteen. Me do that, do that, come back over here. Well, if you do that, you can make the lid fit and then make a finial next week as well. Yeah. Now, don't go finishing her off camera. Yeah, yeah. We can do all kinds of things. Um, anyway, but you see the idea. We've got the, see if I get my little block of wood over here, be even better. There's the, the vase with all of its character, a little bit of little bit of blue resin here. There's some on the inside and along the edge. Um, nice. Still some white on the bottom. Um, but the spalting, I think, is just fantastic. Yeah, you have a little bit of quilting in there, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's a little bit of everything. I, I, the more I think about it, Ruby, I think you're right. I think this is some oh, maple. It maple. Yeah, it looks like maple. And then, uh, like I said, a little piece of walnut. I'll, I can work on that, make it fit a bit better. Um, this has got to go, this tin has got to go deeper so it go, drops down further. Uh, yeah. And then I'll put a little, won't be a long, big finial, probably three inches, maybe two and a half, um, something along that nature. But that's where I'm headed. That's where I'm headed. So if I, if I, uh, don't save it till next week. I'll be sure to have it to show everybody uh, when we come in next week. Well, as, as Rich says, you need more chucks. More yeah. chucks. That's exactly right. More, more chucks. chucks with more more jaws. I just bought one of those uh, four jaw sets, and they all work. I've got them, almost all of them on, um, but I don't have anything for that size. Well, you need more. You up. need more bodies. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. There's the jaws I need right there. <laughs> yeah, I need Watch more. Again, so asking, could it be Hackberry? Possible. Possible. Uh, it does have a little bit of orangish color. There you go, named. Yeah, yeah. You just see it there. Hackberry um, usually is a little lighter in color. Yeah, some orange. In there and in here, um, it could be hackberry. I, uh, I tend to think it's maple for some how reason. About, I, how about if we just call it pretty wood? Yeah, uh, or fog. as I put in the title, fogwood. Fog yep. um, yeah, I've got a lot of fogwood around here. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Well, folks, uh, let's see. I'm not seeing anything. Put Chuck inside your. Oh, put a spur Chuck. Yes, Ron, that's a good idea. That's a thought. Um, yes, yes, this will be Lucy. Will be my hashtag week with a finial. Um, at least that's the plan. If I blow something up here after a while, it, it may that may change. But um, anything else? Any any other questions before we punch out of here? Looks like we've covered just about everything tonight. All right. The old man river had to check out. Need more chucks. So you're exactly right, Rich. Yeah, Roger. Could be hackberry, but I really think it's maple. Um, there was another piece I did recently. Oh, um, I don't have it in here. Little, uh, little natural edge bowl. Um, that I said was fogwood, and somebody said, "Oh, that that looks like hackberry." Well, it's pretty brown. I don't know that it's hackberry. <laughs> it's probably pear, actually. Um, some Bradford pear that I've got stacks and stacks of out sitting outside. One of these days, I'll either burn it uh, or turn it. One of the two. Heart, heart, please. Pear, pear is pear is absolutely lovely to turn. It's very nice to turn. Um, 
the Bradford pear itself is a um, inv evasive, invasive species here in Kentucky. And so um, the whole idea is let's get rid of it as much as possible. Just looking at my and two so, shelves of you. Really of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can have your you. You can have your you. Yeah. <laughs> Just there. There's a shelf there. There's a shelf there. You. And well, you were listen, with your listen. walnut. Keep your walnut. Actually, I've got two bits of walnut on there as well. Lucy's Let's not see. heard of hackberry. And up here, it it's usually grows in hedgerows. Yeah. However, I have a nice large one in front of my yard that the city planted when they redid the street in front. Ah, okay. All right. Very good. Well, we'll get on with this. Uh, uh, like I said, if I don't get carried away and, and go ahead and turn it here in the next day or two, we'll finish this up next week. All right. Good idea. Good. Folks, thanks for coming in. I do appreciate it. Mark, Ruby, appreciate you guys coming in and helping me, helping to keep me straight. It's a <laughs> tough thing sometimes. It's uh, very difficult. It's a chore. But, but it's been good. It's been good. I, well, if you if you add the three of us up, there's a lot of years of experience total. Yeah, well, we might so, have. Sure, sort of. <laughs> Every little bit counts, Mark. Twenty-seven, one hundred and forty-four, and five. Yeah, that works. You've done a lot in five years, though, Mark. Um, there's yes, two or three of have. you guys over there that have are are relatively short timers, but you all have advanced well beyond your years and it's great i'm, I'm glad to see you advance the way you have it's been fun Thank to you. watch COVID was actually a good double-edged sword for me i just spent 14 hours a day seven days a week in here just cutting wood well it's sometimes that's what it takes Mark. there we go there he is i was i was wondering why am i why am i so small <laughs> and I found out. Because you're far away. I had it on close up. I had it on close up. <laughs> well, like I said, guys, it's been fun. It's been a good day. Um, the vase is, is in good shape. I like it. Uh, I may spin it a little more, get it a little deeper, so it's not quite as bottom heavy. Uh, it's still, I've got it hollowed down about that far, and that last inch and a half would make a huge difference. It would feel a lot better, I think, if I took some more out. So I'll probably do that. You could also, uh, if you mount the uh, top of it up towards the headstock, you could taper it a little more um, when you go to take off the tenon and increase the length by another three-eighths of an inch. Oh, I got you. Include the tenon in the length? Yep. Yeah, I could. Sure could. I, I, I'll have to look at it a bit. I kind of like that shape the way it is. Let me get rid of the lid and it'll yeah, help. It looks, looks quite nice. Yeah. If I if I taper that down, it'll be three-eighths of an inch smaller in diameter at the bottom. It may look a little peggy. I don't know. I'll have to I'll look at it and chew on it a bit. Yeah, yeah. I'll get my... my uh, in-house critic to take a look at it <laughs> right. she's usually pretty pretty right on when when i ask her so then again she, i may show it to her and she say i don't care <laughs> <laughs> Good, Lucy. Okay. so everybody gets sweets when they order from me there you go there you go excellent well thanks a bunch i'm gonna hit the button uh say goodbye bye everybody bye, folks <laughs>